Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Durfee High School, our first coverage here at Mac Aldridge Field this fall. We're thrilled to be back. We have the Durfee Lady Hilltoppers on your screen. They will square off against their arch rivals, the New Bedford Lady Whalers, in this evening tilt in conference play. Whalers come in at 0 and 2 and 0. The Hilltoppers 1 0 and 1, and they were also undefeated in preseason. So the Lady Hilltoppers looking good here in the early goings to start the year. Starting lineups were just announced prior to us going live. We'll run them down for you here while the teams are huddled up as we get ready for soccer tonight. For the visiting Whalers, led by head coach Andrea Noguera, senior number two, Destiny Missay, junior number three, Kim Sanabria, junior number six, Haven Lopes, Junior number seven, Vanessa Bucha. Senior number eight, Sage Morrow. Sophomore number 11, Peyton Costa. Junior number 12, Claudia Tino. Senior captain number 13, Calista Pacheco. Senior captain number 16, Tari Pereira. And junior number 17, Ariana Mello. And in goal, freshman goalie this year for the Whalers, number zero, Caitlin Cordero. For the Hilltoppers as they take the field, led by head coach Ami Roach. It'll be junior number two, Destiny Alua Rio. Number 12, excuse me, uh, senior number five, uh, Abby Long. Sophomore number seven, Julia Raposa. Sophomore number 10, Emma McDonnell. Junior captain number 11, Amelia Dias. Junior captain number 13, Zoe Sylvester. Sophomore number 14, Julia Hargraves. Sophomore number 15, Evangeline Souza. Sophomore number 20, Annika Nunes. Junior number 23, Julia Matos. And in goal for the Hilltoppers, a sophomore number 25, Abigail Carrero. And we are underway here at Mac Aldridge Field. Evan Massoud with you for the call. Just a beautiful night here at Durfee. Clear skies, some clouds down towards the south of us, but 70 degrees at game time here at 6.03 Eastern time, not too bad. Chance early for Durfee, ball gets too far away there from Hargraves. And the easy scoop made by Cordero. Durfee wearing new uniforms this year, new jerseys, black with uh, white and red accents and white numbers. The Whalers coming in wearing all white with red lettering. I'm talking with Coach Roach for Durfee pregame, very excited. Um, about the start this year and, and where this team is heading is the Hilltoppers putting some offensive pressure pass up ahead to Hargraves. Hargraves cannot get a clean shot. Good defense there from Miss A to kind of slow her up. Couldn't get the strong foot on it. And it's sent back to the circle. You know, this team, I said to coach, I said, well, what's different from this year? She said, hot start. She said, well, she says we've grown up. So the team is not as young in the sense of um, not necessarily age, but also maturity. Uh, this was a young team in that respect last two years. And uh, this year, she said, very happy with how things have started for Durfee. And I mean, you know, when you start without a loss through two games, always a good start. And one of the biggest things, and she, Coach, believes that was an advantage for Durfee was uh, they've been working on the aerial uh, part of the game, I mean, pulling the ball out of the air. Last year, you may recall, no headers at all because of COVID. So you had to wait for everything to settle basically before you could do anything. Well, this year, uh, you know, we're back to normal, if you will. Um, 
And the Hilltoppers have focused on that part of the game since they couldn't do it last year. And she believes that was the advantage against Eponiquit, the one win that Durfee has uh, was against the Lakers in the season opener. They tied with Old Rochester, another team that, uh, another school that has a very strong athletic program despite not being D1. They're a tough, they're a tough school down here on the South Coast. That goes out of play. Centering pass. Chance for the Whalers. Settle all one-on-one -on -one with the goalie and it's over the crossbar. Peyton Costa with a prime opportunity to put the Whalers ahead early and lofted it just a hair too much. Tonight is uh, youth soccer night as well. So all of the uh, players and families from Fall River Youth Soccer have been invited tonight. And um, doing some fundraising as well, trying to raise some funds for that. A lot of the girls on the Hilltoppers are um, refs on the weekend for those games. So coach wanting to give back a bit, also help bring in the crowds. We want a good crowd against New Bedford, of course. Have a good cheering squad here at Durfee. That's at least what coach is hoping for. Shot on net, and it is just wide to the left. Diving was Cordero. Did not get there, but the ball did not grab the corner either. So a couple great opportunities for both sides here in the first five minutes. Nice to be back though at Durfee, that's for sure. Our first two events that we covered this year was uh, last Friday, football at Diamond, and then yesterday, Somerset Berkeley, we were across the river for girls volleyball as we teamed up with Blue Raiders Studios as we've done in the past. Um, we also, unfortunately, probably noticed it was not live streamed, and unfortunately we had some major connectivity issues there over at Somerset. We tried our best for you, but Honestly, it was about a dial-up speed. We were in a dead zone or something, but we troubleshooted and troubleshooted and just could not get a clean signal. So that one airing now, it is available. You can watch it. We posted it last night. As soon as the game was done, we recorded it, and we got it up on the YouTube channel and on Facebook for you. So if you did miss it, um, be sure to check it out. Remember to like and follow us right here on Facebook if you have not so you don't miss a minute of our live stream action here on Fred TV. And be sure to click over to YouTube. Subscribe to our channel there. All the games are archived on the YouTube channel for Fred TV Sports. Play resumes. Off the free kick, a header towards the net. Open left side, off the post, and cleared away by Cordero. It's still in the box. Now coming back out towards the 15-yard line and cleared by the Whalers. Doesn't get much closer than that, folks. Cadero makes the scoop. Pressure was coming there. Kick going down towards 
Hilltoppers into the field. And very exciting though this week because uh, we're gonna get to see all five of the Durfee team sports, if you will, that compete team versus team like this on a field. Um, or on the court, we saw volleyball yesterday. We're seeing girls soccer tonight. Tomorrow, field hockey against uh, BR. Thursday, that's at 5.30 by the way. We'll be live streaming that tomorrow. Another chance for Durfee. Shot on net, centering pass. Did not get centered enough. Speaking of field hockey, Coach Henrique here in the booth now. After practice, coach, at practice today? Oh, you have a game tonight. Okay. Scratch that. Practice tonight. Game tomorrow. <laughs> So field hockey will be back to that. <laughs> field hockey will be live streamed tomorrow, 5:30 start. Uh, varsity this year going to be uh, the varsity home games will be 5:30 as opposed to four as it's been in the past. Varsity will play second. Um, so 5:30 tomorrow. Soccer scheduled boys soccer on Thursday right back here at Mac Aldridge Field on the stadium at 6 p.m. on Thursday against BR, and then Friday we'll get to see the Hilltoppers. Football team for the first time here in 2021. I should say first time this season, really, because they did play in 2021. It was in March, the bubble season. But I know I speak for uh, many in saying that they are thrilled football's back and being played in the fall. <laughs> I mean, everybody was happy to have a season last year, that's for sure, but nice to kind of have a normal schedule and play at the normal time. So football will be Friday at 7 against uh, the Taunton Tigers. Tigers coming into town. Tend to see Taunton pretty often in uh, football. Passed up ahead. Hargraves off the toes. Goes to the right side. Settled. Will it stay in? No. Out of bounds on the goal. Great effort there, though, on the back end of that. I believe that was Alua Rio. Number two there on the far side. Out of play it goes. It'll be a throw in. Hilltoppers using a ball already on the field on the left side there. Throw in by Raposa. I like the pressure so far. The Hilltoppers have been a little bit more aggressive, kind of controlling the ball a little bit better. You know, for New Bedford and catching up with Coach Noguera, always nice to see her as well. Um, you know, she said one of the things that has been a strain for the team so far, of course, 0-2, you know, not the start that anybody wants, um, but in a full season, it's very early. Obviously, there's going to be positives. It's not panic time at all. Um, you know, some of the positives would be that the passing game for New Bedford, she says, is working. Whaler's doing well with that and defensively too on the wing. The wing attack has been good and a chance almost. Coming in hot there was McDonald. So the wings have been good defensively. Um, so that's been a help as well. Durfee moving it back down the field. That's gonna go into the hands of Cordero. Haven Lopes for the Whalers, number six. She's a junior this year. Uh, one of the players to watch that Coach Nogueras made us aware of. I said she's very impressed by her so far this season. 
uh, been doing very well competing in the center mid roll. Pass down and no chance for the Hilltoppers to get there. And actually the reason they gave up on it is there was a foul back at around the 25-30. So a free kick for the Whalers. So it would not have mattered if anybody from Durfee got to the ball. It was coming back. Throw in on the far side. Collision there, two players going down. Towards the net, tipped, and it goes over the net. Great save there by Cordero. Uh, because it went out off of her, the Hilltoppers will get a corner kick far side. And that is going to be Zoe Sylvester heading to the far corner. Big scramble in the box. People moving already on the ground. Nice block. Twice saved. And out of play again. The initial save actually made by one of the Whalers, it looks like Busha, I believe that was a number seven. She's actually in the goal, like on the post. So in addition to Cordero, she's got defenders left and right. Bouncer in front, goes skyward over the goal. Waiting on a throw in on the far side. Durfee ball now, working the sidelines. Strong throw in. And it goes out.
A lot of traffic there in the middle of the field. Now some separation, foot race to the ball, a chance for the Hilltoppers. Hargraves takes the shot and it's blocked! Wide to the left! Looked like Cordero got the hand on it. Gonna be a free kick here for the Whalers. So actually Cordero did not get a hand on it. It looked like it was deflected, but just went out of bounds on its own. But a great chance there for Hargraves. She had the break, now takes the shot and it's good! Hargraves takes it out of the air. Hilltoppers, one nothing. If at first you don't succeed, <laughs> try, try again. Hilltoppers take the one nothing lead here just about halfway through the opening 40 minutes. Another free kick from the goal. Now going down the other end. Hilltoppers clear it out for the moment. Monica Noons there on the back side, on the far side, I should say. Halting play. That one came up, hitting a player in the head. Down the far sideline, the Hilltoppers look so much faster than a year ago. I'm sure it helps that they don't have masks on outside. They can breathe while they're running better, but I'll tell you, they are, they seem like a much faster team. And that's something that's kind of been lacking over the last few years is the ability to, you know, really sustain, obviously, for an entire hour and 20 minutes on the field, but to also be able to beat the opponent, to get the breaks, to get that separation, you know, that's how you're gonna get opportunities to score. And we've seen this a few times where Durfee's been able to beat, at least tonight, head to head against New Bedford, have been able to beat the defenders and get into some open field, create some one-on-ones with Cordero in net. Right back down the field, Hargraves passing towards center to Amelia Dias, takes the shot, arcing right into the hands of Cordero. Nice play, tracked it the whole way.
That'll bounce, go out of play. Should be Durfee ball, it is. Ooh, I thought that was hands right there. That looked like the ball came up and hit Almeida of the Whalers. Obviously inadvertently, but the hands were out in front and the ball went straight down. To me, that's usually this contact made in that case. Instead, it's New Bedford ball. Another chance for Durfee, but cleared by the Whalers. Thought for a second the ball was going to lead far enough up the field for Dias to get up there, or McDonald rather, excuse me, number 10. That one coming down about the 20. Bit of a check there, and it draws the whistle. Kudo going in a little too Strong there on Almeida. Free kick, it'll be Tari Pereira sending it up the field. Hargraves calling for it, has some help. Dias is there, McDonald is there. Pass up ahead, oh, it slowed up! And McDonald, can she get there? It's off the post and she buries it! How about that? 2-0 Hilltoppers. That's a prime example right there of why you don't give up on the play. Sure, the ball was way ahead of her, but there was backspin on the pass. And on the second bounce on the turf, the ball just stopped, almost like a chip shot in golf. And it let, it let McDonald get there. Durfee with the 2-0 lead here. 14-45 to play in the first. Some exciting stuff here over the last seven minutes of play. Now Hargraves down the field. Oh, she was looking for McDonald. Beautiful pass, perfect setup. But unfortunately, the Whalers sticking a foot out there. The right idea for sure. The speed is what's most amazing though right now for me. In, in comparison to just one year ago. Towards the net. Oh, it's gonna go in! Cordero was screened by the defender. The Whalers have been putting defenders on the posts. And then it bounced and it was mishandled. And the Whalers give up the third goal. This one a bit of a gimme. That's a tough break for the Whalers that time, but the Hilltoppers make it three zip.
Quickly down the field, another chance for the Hilltoppers, cleared away for the moment by Boucher, and it goes out of play. Dias sends it through the uprights, but that won't count here in soccer. <laughs> A little over 10 minutes to play here in the first half. And Coach Roach has got to like what she's seeing from her team here at home against their rivals, the Whalers. Out of play. Whaler's ball goes out off of Raposa. Substitution for the Whalers as uh, Mello is going to head off the field. So just a quick stoppage here. She makes her way all the way to the far side. Nice cut back in traffic. Gets the pass through. That was Julia Matos. Good footwork and ball movement there. It's going to come back this way. But worked her way, weaving through the defenders to try to set something up downfield. Throw in, gets by, goes out of play as uh, Jenna Nogueira not able to make a play on the throw in. It bounced away from her. So a free kick for Durfee from the box. Hargraves moving towards center, passing across to McDonnell. McDonnell coming back, back to Hargraves. Dias breaking forward. Now across to Matos. Little chip shot towards the goal, and it'll be played by Cordero. Free kick for the Hilltoppers at the 20. It's about the same distance as a corner kick. Always a good shot from here. Line drive towards the goal, wide left, and out of play. And one of the things here you know, over the last two years, seeing the construction of the new high school and, you know, all the uh, fencing that had, you know, kind of the, the baggy on it, right, to prevent, like, dust and looking through and debris and whatnot now. On the north end of the field here, right at the top of your screen, you can see the fence. You can actually see the base of the building and the, the grass and the vegetation that's been put in. And it's nice to see all that finishing work because we've been watching construction from this view from basically two years now, Base, and all of that's gonna change now. The right side of our screen, we haven't you know, go down that way yet, or not in a few few moments, but the way the existing building is, demolition's gonna be starting very soon, uh, not waiting around. So, it's gonna be a very different look. In fact, I, I would venture to say from the press box roof, 
where our camera is, probably will be able to see um, President Av and Driscoll once the now old Durfee is demolished. It's going to really make this feel very open on that right side. About six minutes left here in the first half. Pass down the field. Chance for the Whalers here. No, coming out to make the play is Carrero. Oh, firing on that, but that's wide to the right by quite a bit. That'll roll to the fence. Another free kick for Durfee. Bouncer in front. It's good! Second chance effort. Emma McDonald with her second of the game, and it's 4 0 Durfee. That time off the free kick. Ball got loose in front once it landed. Scrambled for the ball, and McDonald buries it in the corner. And the Hilltoppers with a four spot here in the first half. You can hear the cheerleaders as well out here for this game as well tonight. Don't usually have them for soccer either, so, oh, that's a... Major shot on goal, goes way too high. It was a clean shot. Gotta angle those down a little bit more, but definitely an open chance there for the Whalers to get one back. Couldn't convert. Hargraves trying to keep it in, and it goes out, but she was kind of pushed. Going to be Whaler's ball, but got herself a little bit of a shove. Kind of lost her balance. Out of play again. Whalers will throw in again. Callista Pacheco doing the honors. Soft throw in this time. Didn't go down the field, and Matos just... Straight up takes it away. Trying to send it downfield, Pereira. Towards center and it comes back towards the sideline. Whaler's ball. Should be Durfee ball. I think the refs may have missed one there unless there was contact in the middle. Didn't look like it from here. Well, Durfee gets it back now, and we'll see Raposa throw in. Good strong throw up the line. Looking for Hargraves. Goes through the legs there of Lopes. Out of play again. Whalers will try to move it up as we come up on two minutes here. Oh, that's going to draw a whistle. 
Certainly not intentional, but it happens. <laughs> Get tangled up sometimes. So clock has stopped for the final two minutes here. A burst of speed there from Dias, trying to turn it around now up the field to Hargraves, but nobody down for, hill, for the Hilltoppers. And that's going all the way to the far side and out of play. Durfee will throw in, I believe. Yes, they will. Right in the corner, basically, just up the line from it. Free kick coming, Whalers with very little time left here in this first half. Off the head, back towards center, over the head, Hargraves. Loses it, oh, she had open field, tried to kick it ahead and the defenders slowed her up. Maybe a second chance for Durfee here as Dias works through traffic. Good feed to, oh, I hear a whistle, maybe an offside or some contact, maybe a foul. I'm gonna venture to say offside. It looked like Hargraves broke just a little too soon there. So another free kick for the for the Whalers. Cutting it off as Matos. Back to Hargraves. Look at the move around the defender. Hargraves gonna take the shot. Buries it in the corner. She goes tumbling down. Hargraves doing it herself that time. Five, nothing, Durfee. We've been stopped at two minutes here for quite a bit longer than two minutes, and we really didn't have any stoppage time here in the first half. There it is. That'll do it for the first half. A very impressive first half at that for the Hilltoppers. 5 nothing the score. All five goals coming in the final 21 minutes of this first half. So really an offensive onslaught for the Durfee girls in the second half of the first half. Very impressive. Halftime here at Mac Aldridge Field has begun counting down. I'm gonna show you a look here at um, opening day. We did a piece on opening day for the school district. Uh, in years past, we've done this as well. It was the High Five Initiative for uh, to promote attendance, community members coming out to welcome all the students back to school. This year, we did a thumbs up event. And um, so we have that for you now. We're going to show that feature. And we will be back with the 
second half right after that. Stay with us here on Fred TV. This is a fresh new year. With the new year comes new opportunity for growth and learning. We're looking forward to seeing all of our scholars, our staff, back in the buildings where they belong. Welcome back, Florida students. I can't wait to see all the new students. It's going to be so much fun, and I, and I hope that they're going to be nice to other students. I just am so excited, pumped up. I am way almost dynamite. My favorite thing is that they come in and they make such big progress. Their growth from September to June is just so huge. So usually when they leave, they leave like little independent learners and adults, and it's just so nice to see that change. You don't have to cry, the day goes by quick, and uh, the older kids will teach you what to do and what not to do. Um, be brave and have a good day. It's um, just another iteration of us supporting education. We feel it's the primary economic driver for this area. So we had about 30 volunteers who are spread out across the city today, giving all these students a thumbs up, the teachers a thumbs up, welcoming everybody back, because it, it's been a tough uh, several months. So we want to celebrate the return to in-person learning. If our kids aren't here, they're missing out. So we need kids in their seats so that they can learn every single minute that they're out of school, they're missing out on learning. So please, please get the kids into a routine so that they're in school and able to take advantage of every learning opportunity that is afforded to them. It feels good, but, but, but I think everyone's just a little nervous the first day. Same thing as me, I, I had butterflies in my stomach last night, I couldn't sleep. Oh, yeah, I'm like, oh, I need to refill my water bottle. Like, oh, I was, I was just tired. I'm just tired. <laughs> We're rebooting our makerspace this year. So it's a creative place for students to, to do special projects and to, to learn together. Um, and just coming back together, you know, we're still in the pandemic, uh, but we can safely be together and, uh, and, and learn and grow. Welcome back. We wanted to just, you know, motivate them a little bit and welcome them back and tell them to you know put their best foot forward and try to get them to uh, you know start day one in uh, in a positive manner you know and do everything we can to help motivate them i want kids to come to school be active participants in their learning ask questions get involved be there uh, in mind and body so that you can learn from one another and also teach others welcome back The library has just celebrated its annual teddy bear picnic. We've been doing it for well over 30 years, and over the years it's grown to be one of the library's most popular summertime event. There's just something about a teddy bear that gets people all excited. Loads of children and enthusiastic young adults who bring their teddy bears as well that they had when they were children. And as you saw, the library was just covered with children and families. We had over 100 people. We have teddy bear stories, we have our annual teddy bear beauty contest. Uh, Bartholomew Bear, the library's mascot, leads everyone in a teddy bear parade about the building, and uh, everyone just has a great time. 
and our sponsors uh, for the past several years have been uh, Rockland Trust. We're very grateful to them for their support, as well as the Danner family, who have been most helpful to us. Uh, they were out there as teddy bear doctors, as you saw, and um, everyone just has a, a fantastic time. Welcome back, everybody, to Durfee High School. Evan Massoud with you here on Fred TV. Live coverage of girls' soccer this evening. And boy, what a great first half for the Hilltoppers. A 5 nothing lead for Durfee as we begin the second half. All five goals coming in the final 21 minutes of the first half. Very impressive start to the game for Durfee. You heard the scoreboard sound there. The horn, halftime is over, 40 minutes on the clock. And the Hilltoppers will look to continue their pace of play. They really controlled the first half. I mean, you can look at the score and say, well, sure, they're up by five. But that doesn't always tell, the score doesn't always tell the story. In this case, it does. 
the Hilltoppers controlled the pace of play. New Bedford had a couple of chances in the first half to, to grab some goals, but there were not nearly as many chances as the Hilltoppers. And, you know, after some really close calls in the first 20 minutes of the game, Durfee finally broke the ice at around 19 minutes and uh, never looked back. One goal, the third one, was a little bit of a gimme. However, Hilltoppers showing that they didn't necessarily need that either as they've scored four without any doubt either. Or as well, I should say. And right quickly down the field, they have switched sides here at the half. You can probably hear Athletic Director Brad Buston here in the booth announcing uh, raffle tickets. Had a 50-50 raffle this evening, part of the fundraising efforts here for the Fall River Youth Soccer. Corner kick on net. Bouncer in front may have hit the hands. Still loose in front. Whalers clear it, but I thought it hit the hands of Caitlin Almeida there, number 10, who was right in front for the Whalers. Needless to say, hard to see that except for our angle. If you're an official on the field with everybody down in the box. Out of play it goes. The Hilltoppers will get to throw in once again. That one goes out. Right at about the 35. Big strong throw in there from Noons. Goes down into the corner. McDonald showing the speed once again. She keeps it in. How about that effort from McDonald? I'll tell you, I can't get over it. If you're just joining us, the speed of this team for Durfee, it's unbelievable what a difference from a year ago I mean, these girls can get up the field. And of course, you know, the speed runs in the family. Emma McDonald there, the sister of Isabel McDonald, who had such a great high school career playing girls soccer here at Durfee. Graduated, Brad, what about three or four years ago at least? Four, four years ago, okay. Graduated from Merrimack this past spring. So congratulations to Isabel. But uh, yeah, speed thrills in the McDonald family, that's for sure. It goes Emma again, look at that, right around the defender. Sent up toward the box and it'll go out of play. Wide to the right of the goal. Donald passing backwards. Now Dias across the field. Back to Dias it goes. Pass in the box. Oh, in front, nobody home. Yes, it is now, and it's wide to the right.
Another shot on net, playing it in the air. Cordero right into the arms. Far side, out of play. Be Whaler's ball for a throw in. Destiny Misse, double teamed there by two Hilltopper players trying to come forward. Cleared for a moment, didn't get very far. That looked like hands in the box for against the Whalers again. On the ground and scooped. Wheeler's trying to get something going, but the Hilltoppers defense puts a stop to it. Lofted down the field it goes. Toppers have players there. Hargraves with it at the moment, waiting for some help. Dias goes down a little awkwardly, slow to get up. No whistle. Play continues. Hargraves passing up ahead to McDonald, gets by her. Had Sanabria on the inside there, so she couldn't cut back in defensively. That was a good setup by the Whalers in the right spot. Couldn't get beat on at that time. Nice cut in there from Sage Morrow. Takes the shot wide to the left. Didn't get to center it too well. Abigail Carrero, the keeper for Durfee, has not had to work too hard tonight. Not a lot of chances for the Whalers, and her teammates have put five goals on the board. Waiting for a corner kick here. A little bit of confusion, I guess, on the field. I actually didn't realize it was deflected myself, so went out off of Durfee on the goal line. Corner kick for Tari Pereira and the Whalers trying to get on the board here, and they do not that time. Carrero, the keeper for the Hilltoppers, down on the ground. Our trainer, Kelly Mahoney, making her way out with the cart. You know, on the corner kick, there's so many moving parts down in the, so many moving pieces down in the uh, box. You get some collisions sometimes, but she's okay. They wave off the trainer. It'll be another corner kick for the Whalers on this near left side as Pereira back there once again, ready to send it. That's a good one, a little more elevation on it. 
but it goes too far out of the box. That'll go high and wide. No good. Ten minutes gone here in this second half. 30 to go. Out of play it goes. Good effort there from the Whaler, uh, excuse me, from the Hilltoppers. Try to keep it in, try to keep play going. Down the field, another chance for Durfee. Alua Rio had pressure coming on her left, couldn't really turn it in, fires, and it goes out of bounds to the right. Coming to the near side here. And big kick, landing at about the 40. And a bit of a quick whistle there. Free kick coming for the Whalers on very little contact. That will go out of play on the goal line. And the signal is a corner kick for the Whalers. Pereira making her way back down there again. Off the head and out of play.
Free kick from the far sideline now for the Whalers. Hilltopper has kind of built a wall there of defenders. That one cleared away. And it will go out of play on the far side. Whalers will get the throw in. Claudia Tino doing the honors. Good pass again, Alua Rio gonna lead her a little bit into the corner. Slows up. Firing it back, trying to get a bit of a reset. Goes back almost to midfield, however. Foul against the Hilltoppers. It was a bit of a collision there on the throw in as Alexia Rodriguez went down inside the box. So, this is, I believe, going to be a penalty kick for the Whalers. It will indeed be a penalty kick. Tari Pereira, one of the one of the captains for the Whalers will try to get her team on the board. Finds the top right corner. And the Whalers get their first goal thanks to the foul against Durfee and the penalty kick. Five to one the score. It's usually a good spot to go to as well when you're, you know, if you can really place the ball well, going to the top right corner is, or top left corner is usually a good spot because not only is the keeper having to dive left or right and range over to it, they also now, as they're diving and lunging, they have to stretch to try to reach the top. So it was good placement there from Tari. Out of play, New Bedford ball. Goal kick for Durfee. And number nine for Durfee, unable to handle it. Unfortunately, I don't have number nine on our roster here. It was one addition to the roster that coach told me about pregame, but number nine not on it. So we will uh, get that corrected for next week, which is the next time we're supposed to see girls soccer here from Durfee. And 
update from New Bedford, where the boys are right now. Uh, as of a half an hour, it was halftime, and it was a nothing-nothing score, but the Whalers out shooting the Hilltoppers on their home turf in New Bedford, 6-1. to one. Again, that was a half an hour ago, so uh, I venture to say that they're about where we are in the game now, halfway through the second half. Uh, we don't have an update, though, on the score at this time. Let's see. Ah, one nothing New Bedford, 23-32 left to play. If you want a live look in on that as well, um, I believe New Bedford Cable. Oh, just wide to the right. Cordero got the hands on it and deflected it enough. That's a great save. Couldn't hold on to it, but she did save a, save a goal. Uh, I was just about to say, as yes, there'll be a corner kick on the near right side of our screen, of our viewing area, Hilltoppers. We'll have the kick. Uh, the New Bedford Cable Network. New Bedford Cable is... Uh, Live streaming the boys game. In front it goes, and does it go in? No signal from the officials, no, did not go in. That is some tremendous defense by the Whalers to help out Cordero. And if you want a live look in though, be sure to, uh, you can check on over to, click on over to the New Bedford Cable Network's Facebook page. That game also, um, just so you all know, those of you watching at home, uh, we will be sharing content again with some of the area, um, local area stations uh, in our conference. So New Bedford Cable um, has already, they already contacted me this afternoon and uh, Dan Cabral, shout out to him. Uh, we've done a lot of collaborations with uh, football, Thanksgiving Day football with Dan over the years and uh, so Dan already informed me he'd be sending me a copy of their broadcast of the boys game, which is a road game for Durfee today. And uh, I'll be sharing them with them our broadcast here of the girls game. So you'll have bonus coverage this week um, from the road. Uh, and I believe uh, with Brockton as well, I believe Brockton um, Community Access is going to also uh, be sharing some content with us as well. Um, Mike over there at the station has been great to work with as well and over the past year. That's going to draw a foul and a whistle as McDonald goes tumbling down. Dias is going to take the free kick. Still not quite 10 yards, there we go. Still looks more like nine yards, but that one goes sailing. See on the clock there on top of the screen. Just over 16 minutes left to play here at Mac Aldridge Field. Evan Massoud with you here on Fred TV. Thanks for staying with us. Hilltoppers have not scored in this second half, but right now they need not worry as they're up by four. All five of their goals coming in the second half of the first 40 minutes.
Matos goes down, free kick. Hilltopper is not letting anybody get down the field from the defense, sending it right away. Hargraves on the far side, trying to break free. Almost got tangled up, loses the ball for a second. Trying to turn it around, she's gonna pass it off to Kudo. Kudo gonna take the shot and it's wide to the right. On the ground, maybe a foot outside. Caitlin Kudo, one of three freshmen on the team for tonight's game. Had a good look at it right there. Centering pass, in front! Oh! Cordero, I thought she had it and it gets through! Six to one, Durfee. Couldn't see too well from here, but from the booth we're hearing it was from the far side and that would be Hargrave's territory. So if so, it would be her second goal of the night. And six total for Durfee. Confirmation, thank you, Brad, from our athletic director. That was actually Hargrave's third goal, so a hat trick tonight. <laughs> Amelia Dias with the assist off the corner, but uh, she went ranging down into the corner, kept it in. That was not to be diminished. A great play on her part to even make that happen, but Hargrave's with a hat trick tonight, her third goal. Coming late here in the second half. And Hargraves is the leading scorer for the team. Coming into tonight, had four goals, now seven in less than three games. How about this? A whistle. That's how about this. <laughs> I was going to say, offsides. That one coming back. It was going to be a two-on-one against the goalie. But offsides, Hilltoppers have to bring it back. It'll be a free kick for the Whalers. Well, as mentioned, um, our marathon for this week continues. Sports every day this week here on Fred TV. Uh, tomorrow we will have live field hockey at 5.30. The Durfee... Lady Hilltoppers are 1-0-2 on the young season. They'll get to square off against Bridgewater Rainham from right here at Durfee tomorrow at 5.30. Up the field, Alua Rio showing the speed again. Going to take the shot on one hop down to the knees. Cordero makes the save. Gives it a good boot, landing in the circle. Shot on net, loose, it goes across, Alua Rio. Couldn't get a clean shot, gonna get a second chance, going across the box. Abby Long. Shot is wide.
Just over 10 minutes to play here on this Tuesday night. Hilltoppers up by five. Open to keep it that way, grab win number two of the season. Ranging play there from Cordero, grabbing the ball with the fingertips. McDonald was there, just couldn't get there fast enough. Calling for it was uh, Almeida on this near side. Nobody saw her. She was wide open for New Bedford. Hargraves setting it up. Shot buried into the corner. Hargraves sets up Dias for lucky number seven. That's as pretty as you'll see right there. Perfect set. Seven to one Hilltoppers, 9.39 to play. That was beautiful. Cordero, excuse me, Correro, making the scoop. Down into the corner. Hilltoppers trying to get it out. Another chance for Durfee, two on one. And Codero is there. Seven minutes to play in the boys game, still one nothing New Bedford. Out in New Bedford. Timeout on the field with just over seven minutes or just about seven minutes to play here. Whalers calling timeout. So both teams will huddle up here.
can see as uh, Sam was running camera tonight, backs out, you see the new school, all the ambient lighting. Let's come on now. It's it's just as I was mentioning earlier. Nice to see you know all the kind of construction fencing is down now. So this is all finishing work that you see on the left side here. Beautiful. And looks great at night. I mean, it was always lit up during construction at night. Uh, so we all, it was never like it was just pitch black over there. Uh, but now seeing the finished building and no construction on that area, it's really quite something. Hope most of you had the opportunity to visit for the open house this past weekend because uh, the building is absolutely stunning. Both teams come out of the timeout here. Again, just over seven minutes left to play here in this one. The Hilltoppers with the seven to one advantage. A very different game out in New Bedford for the boys game. This one a blowout really for Durfee. Up the field, onside, McDonald has a break. She's looking for number three. Does she get it? Oh, it's off the post. You kidding me? Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Hilltoppers will have a corner kick on the near right side. On the ground and out of play, we'll do it again as the Whalers clear it out on the goal line. So another corner kick coming for Durfee. As always, Sylvester will do it again. Lefty kicker trying to hook it. Loose in front, shot taken, blocked in front by the Whalers defenders. Perfect placement that time. Maybe a little bit of luck involved as well. That was a hot shot from the top of the square, top of the box. And now cleared out, out of bounds it goes. Bedford will throw in. The Whalers have just taken a 2-0 lead in boys soccer as that one's down under five minutes. So the Durfee boys down by two with very little time left out in New Bedford. Playing the line here, it goes out. Whalers will keep it. Nice turnaround right there to keep it in play. Up the line, out of play once again. Number two there, Miss A will throw in. On the ground, going out of play. The Durfee girls here will play out the last three minutes. 
win number two. When you're playing your rivals, there's always a little extra adrenaline. And when you're playing for a reason, not just to win, but other reasons, there's always a little more motivation, I guess you could say. And um, Coach Roach for Durfee telling me pregame that the girls wanted to dedicate this game in honor of one of their teammates um, who was redshirted this year, unfortunately, because of uh, injury. And uh, that's uh, Emma Tippetot, a senior this year, one of the captains for the Hilltoppers. So not able to play here in her senior year, her last opportunity to play against their arch rivals, the Whalers. And so the Durfee girls, Emma's teammates, dedicating this game to her. And they have dominated tonight. Final two minutes here, clock has stopped. Hilltoppers keep pressing though. Shot is good, number eight. On the night, number four for Hargraves. Off the side of the face there. Number nine kind of turned it into it a little bit. Scooped up by Cordero. And she'll drop it off around the 30. Short punt there. There's the whistle. This one has gone final. The Durfee Hilltoppers with the route against New Bedford. Eight to one, the final score here from Mac Aldridge Field as the Lady Hilltoppers improve to 2 0 oh, 1. Lady Whalers get handed their third loss here on the young season. They are 0 oh, 3 and 0. Oh. Fun one tonight. We haven't seen a blowout win here in soccer in, like this in quite some time. Good crowd on hand for youth soccer night against the Hilltoppers, arch rivals, the Whalers. Thanks for tuning in tonight, folks. We hope you'll join us tomorrow 
for live field hockey against Bridgewater Rainham. That one scheduled for 5.30 tomorrow, Wednesday, September the 15th. For Gary Lee and Sam Montero on camera from on top of the roof tonight, I'm Evan Massoud saying so long from Durfee. We'll see you tomorrow.